Hey everybody, I'm Greg Bissonette. Here we are at Drum Channel and we've got quite a round table here. But the first guy I want to talk about and introduce, you've probably read many of his articles about drumming. He's a very good friend of mine and a very good drummer and a very good doctor for everybody in the drum industry and a few teams like the Los Angeles Dodgers and the California Angels of Anaheim of Los Angeles of uh, boom, boom, boom. He's amazing. He's a great friend. And uh, his name is Dr. Luga Podesta. Welcome to the show. Great, right, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We hear you're moving to New York, though. Yes, I'm going back after 30 years, back to New York. To Long Island? Long Island, uh, Suffolk County, uh, the Northport area. Wow, but you will be keeping the same email. So people, drummers all around the world can reach you via your email, right? Correct. Which I think is Luga, L-U-G-A-M-D, at AOL.com. So yeah, he's written so many great articles, done so much for the drummers of Los Angeles and all over the world. People come to see him with tendon injuries, shoulder injuries, knees, backs, and he fixes them up. He's got the Podesta Orthopedic uh, Sports Medicine Institute here in uh, Thousand Oaks and uh, uh, Los Angeles area, and just a great friend. And uh, thanks, Greg. And a great dr member of the drum community. Well, Dr Greg got me started in all this. Did I really? Back in the day, how many, 12 years ago, right? Man. Before the house, I was taking care of the Los Angeles Dodgers at the time, and Greg, I think you were on tour with James Taylor and you hurt your elbow. That's right. And called the Dodgers to find out who took care of their elbows. And it's funny, because two weeks prior to that, I was harping on my wife that I wanted a DW kit. And she's like, no way you're getting a kit. You're just gonna forget, you know, you're gonna give it up faster than you get it. Kept harping on her, and all of a sudden, Greg calls out of the blue. And she thought he, it was me putting her up to putting him up to uh, getting a kit, and uh, she was kind of reluctant to to talk to him. And finally, Greg convinced her to give him my phone number, and it was a friendship ever since. Buddy, and now he's got Rosanna down, man. <laughs> One of the yeah. hardest drum grooves ever. Yeah. <laughs> and you study every week with John Chalella. Chalella, right? Yeah, great, great, he's great, great drummer and great teacher, and friend. Yeah, so you sounded great there, Luke. We played uh, just a bit ago, and uh, really great. Thanks. But it's been fun. I'm gonna miss it. Well, I'll be gonna, back. I got enough vacation. I'll be back enough. Yeah, and you're gonna keep writing articles for all yep. the great drum publications, and we'll be we'll be bugging you here at Drum Channel. Thanks. Thank Luke, I've got a question for you. Sure. What would you so before while we've got you here, we have like this huge wealth of knowledge. Like who's that, Greg? Yeah, all, no, all you. between you. I'm <laughs> talking about you right now because if I ask Greg how to fix tendonitis, I don't know if he'll have a very good answer. I don't think answer. I'd be able to tell you what. But that. what would you say? Like some of the three most common injuries are because you're a drummer as well. Correct. I, I saw you drum, and uh, what would you say are the three most common things you see, and what are some common ways you can use to avoid those injuries? Um, first, I mean, probably the most common thing are overuse injuries. Um, it could be a tendon, it could be a muscle, and it could be any part of your body. Uh, probably the most common things I see are in the forearm and the elbow area, um, like we would see tennis elbow. It's, it's basically an overuse from repetitive flexion extension of your wrist. You know, the best way to prevent it is to really uh, try to warm up properly before you play, stretch, ice down afterwards, uh, maintain strength, and there's some simple exercises that you can do to strengthen these muscles and maintain that strength and flexibility. Um, a common kind of a obscure injury that I'm starting to see now, especially drummers that play uh, uh, traditional grip, is arthritis in the thumb right here. Interesting. You know, and, and this has plagued a number of drummers, Sheila E., um, who else? Dave Weckl. Uh, there's another one, I can't remember his name. But uh, Steve Smith, I'm sorry. But all these guys have that, you know, just from that repetitive grip in the stick, right. puts pressure on that joint, and this can be really debilitating because you're not, you can't pinch, you can't, you can't hold a stick. Yeah, there's no, you can't form any fulcrum. Right. You don't have any. So once you have that, and once the arthritis develops, it's a bear to try to get rid of. We've actually uh, started uh, performing some biologic therapies, like stem cell therapies that we can do into the joints that are arthritic now, and actually get the cells to start to grow, and it takes the pain away and it allows these drummers to play. And we can apply that to any joint in the body. And even with tendon injuries and things like that, I mean, Greg is, Greg has been in for the same kind of thing, you know, but it, it can help restore normal tissue as opposed to scar tissue. What about the spinning of the, of the blood? Right, that's, you know, we, we, we can take blood and we'll take the platelets from the blood, concentrate it, and that's the normal body's way to treat an injury. It, it goes to this inflammatory 
process where, unfortunately, that the body when it when it happens, it's painful, but but we can reproduce that now tenfold the normal ability of the body to to heal, and we can get these tissues. It's called PRP, and I mean athletes get it all the time now, but I mean it's been great with with musicians because it they don't lose a lot of time. I remember asking you about pitchers. Do pitchers really take ice jacuzzis after games? And you said they sure do. And you came to a recording session I was doing at Rumbo in uh, Canoga Park years ago. And I'd played a take and my elbow like, you know, was bothering me, my tendon. And so I was icing it and you said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing what you said, man, ice. It's better than Advil, man, you know, God's <laughs> ice. You know, I'm just gonna do my anti-inflammatory. You go, but you're gonna go back out there and play in a minute, aren't you? I said, yeah. You're going to be playing on frozen tendons. Right. <laughs> oh, right. I shouldn't do it in between. Right. You know, pre and, I mean, that was the first article we did for Drum Magazine. Wow. It was pre and post performance stretching and, and uh, flexibility and exercises. And, you know, it's a big thing. I mean, if you, if you play on a cold muscle, it doesn't matter if you're playing the drums, you know, playing a guitar or running track, it makes no difference. Those, those muscles are stiff and they're not, they're not very pliable. So it, it actually increases your risk of tearing them. So before, before you play, you should do some kind of warm up where you actually increase your core body temperature. You know, you could walk, you can jog, you could get in the shower, you could put hot packs on, anything that increases that, that tendon heat, and then go do your stretches, play, and then afterwards ice it down. It's, it's interesting, because I, I feel like musicians are usually, on, young musicians are usually get taught pretty good warm up techniques, but it's interesting comparing it to a sport, because like I did dance for a long time, and those kids will just walk in, especially young, hyperactive, yep. like 10-year-old, 9-year-old kids. They'll walk in and start going at like full bore right away. Wow. And well, the like, same thing happens in sports yeah. too. These young kids, they go out. I deal a lot with throwing athletes because of my Major League Baseball uh, connections. But but these kids will go out, they'll get out of the car, go onto the field, start throwing, and that's their warm-up is to throw. And I, I'll teach them all. It's like you don't throw to warm up. you got to warm up to throw. Yeah. And by that, I mean you got to run, you got to jog, sweat, stretch, then throw. Well, right. you equated symbols uh, to shoulder and right. and throwing. You've dealt with a lot of shoulder injuries. Sure. I mean, back in the, you know, when the symbols were way up high and guys were, you know, had big kits, Great. you know, that's repetitive <laughs> lifting your arm. I mean, it wears your shoulder. That's the same as throwing a ball. So if you don't mind, I'm going to open it up to the rest of the, the crew here. No, go ahead. As far as Any questions. questions to Luga. Yeah, questions for Luga. Uh, what about people that have... Um, there's a foot thing that I've heard about that uh, some people deal with. I think it was Danny Serafin was talking about a foot. Plantar fasciitis. Yeah, tell mm. us about how that relates yeah. to Plantar foot. fasciitis, I mean, that's common in running, running um, fat guys like me. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. What happens is your foot, when, whenever you irritate the bottom of your foot, and it could be from shoe wear that you use, walking on hard surfaces, some people are just prone to it. What happens is when... Typically, you're, there's, a, there's a long arch that goes on the bottom of your foot that gives you that arch. So what happens is if you irritate that archway anyway, you could fall off a step, you can, you can walk barefoot on, hit a rock, you can do anything, even running or repetitive use of your foot, this becomes inflamed and it actually will thicken and tighten up. So what happens is your foot, if you have a normal arch like this, when you rest and you take like sleeping at night or you're sitting in a chair, your foot will naturally tighten up like this. So as soon as you take that first step to stretch it out, it hurts like hell. You're pulling on that and it can be very debilitating for people. So the, you know, what we try to do initially is to really stretch that out, ice it. Um, if, if, that doesn't, if that doesn't help, then physical therapy, uh, sometimes injections, but um, it's a very difficult problem. I mean, from a surgical standpoint, before we started doing biologics to treat it, um, like PRP and stem cells, the surgeon would actually go in and cut it because that was the way to treat it. But then you lose your archway. I, I, you know, I got a question about, sometimes it feels like we have these little knots or balls in my wrist and um, hands, wherever there's muscle, like in, I'm never really sure, I kind of try to rub it out, you know, type of thing. And I've talked to a few people who experience it, but uh, I've never really known what what it was, and I didn't worry about it or what it could be. Sometimes, if you're, you know, if you're dehydrated to some extent, your muscle will cramp a little bit, or you can develop these little knots in the muscle. Yeah, um, and it's it's more that the muscle is not flexible at one point. 
So, I mean, you could be doing repetitive things. You think you're going to become flexible, but actually you wear that muscle down. You can have different injuries to that muscle, yeah. you know, different, different points in the muscle where those cells just contract and become tight. You know, and by, by rubbing across the muscle tendon or the muscle itself, and then lengthwise, usually we'll work that out. But it's maintaining your hydration, your flexibility is what'll help you. Do you see low back problems with bad posture in drumming much? See a lot of things with bad posture, posture in drumming, but back problems are a real issue because drummers tend to sit forward, you know, especially if you sit with a low, <laughs> a low seat and your legs are up and you're putting a lot of pressure on your lower discs. Mm -hmm. Your discs are like water balloons that space the bones apart. So any pressure straight up and down. So if you're sitting upright and you're bouncing, that's fine. As soon as you bend and twist, it's like taking a water balloon and you basically pop it out the back and that's what happens to a disc injury. Tony Williams used to always say in lessons, you're sitting too low. Why do you guys sit so low? You should sit higher. You're the king of your drums. You know, sit out, sit up. And I had a hard time feeling good sitting up high, but is it better for you to sit a little? For, for, for a number of reasons. I mean, for your back, for one, um, for your shoulders, you're not reaching as high, especially on the ride. I mean, just bringing your arm away from your body puts a lot of stress across your, your rotator cuff muscles and they become irritated. But also for your knees, the, the lower you are in the, in the seat, the more flexed your knees are and there's more, more pressure across your kneecaps which can become painful. Buddy Rich sat pretty high, and Freddie Gruber in lessons would always say, Buddy was never working that hard. Everybody's got, you know, all this symbols way too high, and he'd talk about the conservation of motion. And It's correct. You know. I, learned, I learned this from uh, an old pitcher with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, he, used to ha he used to preach this all the time, Sandy Koufax. It should be a little, easy. Little pitcher with the <laughs> it should Sandy be, Koufax. It should be easy to throw hard, and it's the same thing when you drum. I mean, you should be ergonomically set that you don't have to move around a lot. You watched with me years ago a Steve Smith DVD, and you said, has that guy ever had back problems or back surgery? And I asked him, he said, no, I never have. You said he has the perfect textbook posture and the way he doesn't twist. Can you elaborate on watching Steve? Because everything is, everything is within reach for him. So he doesn't have to reach, he doesn't have to twist. He's able to, to keep everything low. So there's minimal movement for him to be able to get around the kit. Wow. But then you get a guy like Jason Bittner, who's in good shape, Ergonomically, he plays very well, and he has injuries. Why do you think that is? Just hitting so hard? Or? I don't know. He hits pretty hard. He hits hard, but ergonomically, if you watch him, he doesn't move. Okay. Some oh, people are prone to that some are Physiology. Aren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to ask one last question for you, and then we're going to wrap it up here. What, if you could tell like a, someone, a young drummer, like 10 years old, if you could give them one piece of advice to think about, or it doesn't have to be one piece of advice, but what would you think would be the most important Thing for them to be thinking about to avoid injury at that age going f moving forward you know 10 15 years down the road I mean I think the, the best the best advice is to get a good instructor you know like Greg or any of you guys and really learn the right way how to play I mean from an ergonomic standpoint from a from a, a movement standpoint um, learn how to warm up properly and cool down properly and I think that'll help protect them all right Luga, I can't thank you enough. Uh, thank this you for having me. Unexpected pleasure. Thank today. you, buddy. Thanks. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. <clears throat>